Let's talk about the cancer pollution study because that is a profound group of, of people who are suffering mightily. And if you want to talk about you know, depression and people who are facing the end of their life, who have to go through chemotherapy and radiation and so much, just so much heartache and physical ache at one time, that's where you'd go to find patients dealing with all of that. Um, when you went into that study, I read that you said something to the effect of, I really wanted to be careful because the last thing I wanted to do was add to their disappointment, their agony, their physical or other challenges. I mean, that that must have been a tough one for you emotionally, mentally to take on. Yeah, yes, it was. Uh, And uh, as I think we'll end up talking about my, I now have personal (laughs) empathy with these people that I didn't at the time. But but yes, it, so this was our first therapeutic study, and and it was in people who were depressed or anxious because of this cancer diagnosis. And how can one not have empathy for that, uh, in particularly in our our culture? I mean, that is kind of the deepest existential question, isn't it? What what hap- What what are we doing here? What happens when we die? And that's a source of tremendous fear for some for some people. Uh, other others not, depending on what your worldview beliefs are. But for many, it is, and it's a completely understandable one. And so, I, again, this was our first therapeutic study, and I thought, do we know what we're doing here? And uh, and and we need to be careful because whatever that is like to lean into that question about the the termination of life uh we wouldn't want to make that worse in people uh but there had been an older literature from the 60s that suggested that this kind of intervention would be helpful and uh and it turned out and in, indeed it was and uh wow. and so and i how. was relieved as that study uh, progressed. There was uh, actually at, at, when we f- initiated the study, we did so at a at our highest dose of psilocybin, and we just had a couple of people whose response, you know, wasn't as good as I would have hoped, and I and so I worried about that, and we we dropped the dose of psilocybin down. I don't know now in retrospect whether that was necessary or not, or whether I was just being overly cautious but when you're when you're working with new compounds under new conditions i'm going to default to being overly cautious and in any case the dose we gave produced these profound effects most people having these remarkable experiences many of them reporting a changed sense of uh of death and and what that and what that means. And I think that came out differently for different people. Some people put it into a religious context and they and they now were sure that they would encounter an afterlife. Uh, other people didn't put it into a religious context per se, uh, yet they felt that there was something uh, that existed af- after death, um, and some just felt that there was a there was some kind of benevolence in in this whole in this whole story it, that we're involved with. There's some beauty and elegance in this, and dying was okay. What I think the I think what I found to be most touching about the outcomes of of those uh, patients and their stories is very often they came out of these experiences in this really uplifted state in which they ended up consoling their caretakers. I mean, there was a role reversal. They had family members who were really worried about them and wanted to do right by them. And they almost a number of them just turned that back on their caretakers and were providing assurances to their caretakers that this is sad i'm i'm gonna leave (laughs) i have to go 
uh, but it's okay and it's beautiful and everything's going to be all right. And to hear hear those stories, I mean, it still kind of makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up because of the emotional significance that had for everyone that they came in contact to with. What's your gift going to be this Valentine's Day? How about taking 10 or 15 years off your appearance with Genucel Skincare and their most popular package? And right now, every most popular package, all their best stuff is 70% off, 70, and includes the next breakthrough in skincare technology, Genucel's probiotic moisturizer, absolutely free. These super ingredients found in yogurt can have the same nourishing benefits and goodness for your skin, right? You eat the yogurt, you get the probiotic, and you can do this on your skin too with probiotic extracts that can target bad bacteria on the surface of your skin to restore balance to your skin's microbiome for a noticeably clearer complexion and visibly younger appearance. See those fine lines, wrinkles, dark spots, sagging jawline, even bags and puffiness visibly disappear right before your eyes, thanks to Genucel. Plus, with its immediate effects product, see results in under 12 hours guaranteed or your money back. Go to genucel.com slash MK60 right now. And for the first time ever, every order at genucel.com from now through Valentine's Day will include a beauty box with two, count them, two luxury gifts for free. Order now, two weeks only, genucel.com slash MK60, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.